Rockstar has always had a quality you could feel in their games. Whereas other games would take shortcuts to meet deadlines, Rockstar would delay as long as they needed to make things perfect. perfect. From the way water actually makes the character wet, to the ticking of a car engine when you turn a car off. They've always focused intently on detail. Unsurprisingly, you can find the smallest of details in the biggest feature of every GTA game. The map. A Rockstar map is more than just a map, it's a world. It's not just a bunch of buildings and roads, it's a character. It speaks to you through its advertisements and its inhabitants. It transforms depending on the time or the weather. It has insane levels of detail down to each alley or back road. Nothing feels copy and pasted. Each house stands out and looks separate. Even the houses under construction are all at different stages. Characters live and work. They talk on their phones, carry groceries, drive to their houses. Radio advertisements are custom made for products you can see in the world, be it on a billboard or on a store shelf. Franklin's neighborhood has music blaring in the nearby houses, creating an immersive ambience. Random events around the world interact with you and send you on side missions. The wildlife in Red Dead can be hunted. The snow you step on crushes under your weight. When you play a game from Rockstar, you can tell they worked hard to sell you not a map, but a reality. Each GTA map draws inspiration from the real world. Los Santos represents Los Angeles, Vice City, Miami, San Fierro, San Francisco, and Liberty City is New York City. Buildings are created as perfect matches or parody-like matches to their real-life counterparts. Rockstar not only captures the city's spirit, it does it while looking exactly like the real thing. When it comes to capturing a city, I think Rockstar were at their best when they created GTA 4's rendition of Liberty City. Almost every corner of the map has something interesting to discover. After being featured in GTA 1 and GTA 3, this time was Rockstar's closest at finally creating their own vision of New York City in a more realistic manner, and it's an amazing map. They didn't just directly lift landmarks or choose to make an exact replica of Manhattan only like other games have done. They included the outer boroughs, or most of them, since, you know, Staten Island is missing. But they included parts of New Jersey that are also directly next to New York. Every part of Liberty City has a different feel to it, and no two neighborhoods are alike. It manages to both capture the feel of their real-life equivalents, as well as also being unique in its own way. The GTA 5 map is built with gameplay at the forefront. Each mission has you traversing the terrain in interesting ways, hanging from buildings, or going underground to drill into a bank exactly where the bank vault would technically be. In a somewhat impossible way, missions are fun and huge, despite not being made in a linear map design, but instead creating a linear mission design out of a huge open world. Lester's house is rigged with cameras highlighting his deep paranoia. Trevor lives in the open country, giving the feeling of solitude and disconnection from the others, where you even spend an entire mission driving to the state just to reconnect with Michael. Each character feels real and seems to inhabit their respective houses realistically. Rockstar even created an entire separate section of the map called North Yankton just for two missions. The ambition Rockstar has for its worlds are out of this world.
With so much going right for GTA 5's map, is there even room for improvement? When I look at the map for GTA, I feel there is one major flaw in online, but this may have been intended on Rockstar's part. It's the bottom half of the map. It's the most inhabited section. Similar to how in GTA 4, most players would converge on the airport, it seems that players stick around Los Santos. It feels like a major loss considering it's one third of the map. If they had a bigger city like San Fierro at the northern tip, then players would have a reason to leave Los Santos. And on the way to San Fierro, they'd be occupying the entire map. Another thing is some people don't like the fact that GTA 5 was the first GTA to immediately open the entire map to the player from the start. It was also the first GTA since the 3D era to be one single island. No one map of any video game is going to be perfect, and this even counts for the maps Rockstar have created for their games. Some of their maps are better than others, but like with anything, there's always room for criticism. For instance, in GTA 3, Shoreside Vale was hard to navigate. There were two halves to this part of the city. The roads felt like they just went all over the place, and because of this, and the fact that there were a limited number of crossings between this river, it'd be very easy to get turned around and lost. This made the paramedic and taxi driver side missions much more difficult. And don't forget about how there was no map in the pause menu. You either had to have the map poster or print it out, or just know the map and know where you're going by heart. Plus, this is a seriously underutilized area. Not counting any of the side missions, the only main story mission that takes place here is the last one. GTA 4's Liberty City was my favorite map of theirs, but that doesn't mean it's perfect either. We're Staten Island. I mean, if the answer to that is, oh, it's the least famous borough of New York and nobody cares about it, I still feel like not including it was somewhat of a missed opportunity. Staten Island is mostly residential, but it also has a bunch of large parks and wooded areas. This could have easily served as the countryside that many players wanted to see for GTA 4. Just imagine taking a dirt bike off-road through the woods or just driving around and being able to experience someplace that feels a little more remote compared to the rest of the map. With GTA 5, I think not having a second city was a mistake. Most players had basically no reason to leave Los Santos. Almost everything there was to do in the game was there, and going all the way out to Polito Bay or anywhere else in the countryside felt almost like a chore. Personally, what I would have liked to have seen if they wanted to keep the game focused on Southern California rather than basing it on the entire state, or the entire state along with Nevada, like in San Andreas, then I think Los Santos should have been included to the north, but then to the south or southeast, we'd have another city based on San Diego. That way, with Los Santos, we'd get another recreation of someplace familiar to GTA fans, and with a San Diego recreation, we'd get the first completely new location. Plus, the Salton Sea in real life is to the south of LA as opposed to the north, and it's closer to San Diego. And San Diego is a beautiful city. I personally always enjoyed it, and it's one of my favorite places in California, so there's my two cents on that and why I think San Diego would have been cool to include. My biggest hope for GTA Online is a map expansion. Imagine being able to visit all of the major GTA cities in one large open world. GTA Online has to go somewhere or get a sequel. The idea of a GTA Online 2 just doesn't sound right though. People have already told me in the comments that they would hate having to restart any GTA Online character. And it makes sense that Rockstar would capitalize on GTA Online by expanding its world. All they would need to do is update the graphics every few years, which they already seem to be doing, and churn out more and more map expansions and online content and raise the player cap from 32 to something like 300. Unfortunately, I do not like the current state of GTA Online, so going all in on this mess would be a sorry situation in my book. I'd rather have a complete redesign, then include each previous game's world, make it a separate entity from any of the single player games, then port in each map to online. So when GTA 6 comes out, if it's set in Vice City, it would be a single player game but the map would be ported into GTA Online. But as it stands now, this building is still under construction. No big map updates other than the casino have happened to the map, only hidden map updates to rooms that you buy. Now that GTA 5 is going to be expanded and enhanced for the PS5, what better way is there to enhance the gameplay experience than by expanding the playable area? Besides forgetting that this thing ever existed. Eventually, when GTA 6 does come out, if it's in Vice City, then I could see them porting the map into a standalone version of GTA Online. But before that, if GTA 6 is really going to be a long ways away, then maybe they can make some other kind of minor map expansion. What about North Yankton? 
It might have only been made for two missions, and is clearly not meant to be explored much outside of the bounds that we're allowed to move around in, but with a few changes and an expanded map with more things to do, it'd probably make a nice location to add. Then there's also Liberty City, which would require a lot more work to update since it was last seen in 2008, but it's nonetheless an HD rendition of a map that they have available. I'm not a big fan of GTA Online, but if Liberty City was added, I'd actually be motivated to play it more and go around seeing what's new there. One thing I'd love to see is destruction. I'm not asking for anything crazy, but basic cosmetic building destruction was done back in 2011 on Battlefield 3 and worked perfectly. Imagine shooting rockets at buildings in GTA and seeing the side of the building crumble off, revealing the interior. Does anyone else remember opening a GTA game case and opening the physical map to look at the world? The classiest move on Rockstar's part was adding those huge maps in their game cases. Who knows how much extra that cost them to produce, but no other game that I knew about ever did that. They even did this as far back as GTA 1, I still have my copy of this. And it's amazing to think that they had their ideas on fictional cities down as early as 1997. And back when I was younger and playing GTA 1 on the PS1, I could have never imagined how these cities would look in just a few short years. Vice City for me holds a really special place in my heart. It's just the perfect combination of a fun story, atmospheric setting, and the right soundtrack to go along with it. And back when GTA 4 came out, the most simple of features were game-changing, like walking into interiors without stepping into an arrow and loading in. Rockstar has always confused me on what is real and what isn't real in GTA. Because according to official lore, zombies, ghosts, and aliens are all real in the GTA universe. As this building in San Fierro shows, this GTA 5 ghost, and the many UFOs you can spot as well. Rockstar likes to push the boundaries of their reality, and at this point they've even confirmed time travel to be real. You really have to love the easter eggs that are added across all of the maps that Rockstar have created. The literal easter egg across from the VCN building's rooftop, the sign on top of the Gantt Bridge, the fact that GTA 4's equivalent of the Lincoln Tunnel appears to have been named after Lincoln's assassin, and don't forget about the gigantic beating heart inside the Statue of Happiness. I know GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 have ghosts and UFOs, but this thing is just plain creepy. When you look at a game like Watch Dogs 2 and compare it to a Rockstar title, you can immediately tell there's a difference in quality. Many assets feel lazily duplicated on Watch Dogs, where in GTA, every area feels different. Rockstar even goes as far as having each street named and has Radio Dispatch list off the street you're on. Nico will even say the name of the street you're currently at when you call the police, fire station, or ambulance. Where would you like us to send an officer? Middle Park East. Most buildings don't stand out in other games, and not many titles attempt open worlds like GTA, and the ones that do don't compare. Saints Row feels cold and lonely. Just Cause feels huge but empty. Crackdown is janky and detached. But when you play GTA, there's something that makes it different. There is a reason Rockstar has monopolized the open world industry. Not a lot of other open world titles have been able to do what Rockstar has done in terms of crafting an incredible open world setting. I think Saints Row 2 came close though. Stillwater was expanded and retooled greatly from the first game, and even though it was the same city, by Saints Row 2 it still felt fresh to explore again. They expanded the city and added new areas, changed a few old ones, there was an absolute plethora of interiors, the hospital, the airport terminal, the science museum, a video game development studio, a fitness center, an entire shopping mall, just to name a few. And the NPCs feel like they're actually doing things other than just walking around or standing around. Look at all the action nodes placed across the map by the developers and you'll see what I mean. All of these spots are where NPCs can perform various actions, and in some cases, if the player idles nearby one, the protagonist will even take part in some of these actions. Volition did a wonderful job with Saints Row 2, and they put some serious effort into trying to create a living, breathing, open-world location. It's just too bad that Saints Row the Third's Steelport was such a bland mess. It was mostly based on Pittsburgh, but I doubt that even the real Pittsburgh is this boring. Almost every area feels the same. Loads of buildings were clearly just copy and pasted across the entire map. There were hardly any interiors compared to Saints Row 2 and almost no unique areas. As a huge fan of the first two Saints Row games, I can only hope that the location for the new title that they're working on is more like how Stillwater was.
Rockstar comes first place in many categories. Map making and world building are at the forefront. And each game manages to bring something new to the table as far as their maps go. No matter what we think of GTA currently, or where we think the franchise might be headed next in terms of online versus single player, the one thing I think we can all look forward to at least is the setting. Where's it gonna be? What's it gonna look like? And how fun will it be to explore? The next time you drive down a block or notice a landmark, remember the talented artists at Rockstar Games who spent hours modeling and texturing the assets. The hundreds of people working together to deliver thousands of models that are all different and unique, yet somehow all fit together perfectly and precisely. The next time you play a Rockstar game, just think about the remarkable maps. Please visit Badger Goodger's channel. He makes really cool GTA videos where he goes into game files, examines old trailers, looking at how different the games were during development, or he talks about the news. He's a cool guy and he makes cool videos. He's not a clickbaiter, he's a badger. Link to his channel is in the top right or in the description. Thank you guys for watching and a special thank you to my patrons who help support me so that I can make these videos. I really appreciate everyone's support for the channel.